So we are here with John Malloy, the uh, Minister for Colleges and Training and Universities, and we're talking about the York strike. Uh, so I guess the question that I'd like to ask, uh, that's probably on everyone's mind, is why back to work legislation and why now specifically? Sure. I mean, listen, uh, this is an extraordinary step and uh, we called the legislature back on a Sunday afternoon to get this legislation through as quickly as possible. It was not a decision that was made lightly. Uh, we believe in collective bargaining. Uh, universities are autonomous institutions and they negotiate with their, their workers uh, uh, through the normal process. Occasionally there are disruptions. It's always unfortunate, especially for students. But the best way in 99 times out of 100 is for both parties to resolve the issue. I mean, you say that, I mean, the best insertion in the students, but I think you say that kind of lightly because, I mean, it's been 80 days. We've already lost at least a month of our summer, a summer incomes, that's thousands of dollars. Multiply that by 50,000 students. I mean, why now? I mean, back to work legislation, how did you not know why did you not know that there was a deadlock a month ago? Well, listen, the, 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 the rules of the game uh, are, are collective bargaining. Uh, that's the, uh, the way in which negotiations take place in, in, in this province. And the only time that a government uh, uh, intervenes in a situation like this is when all avenues are exhausted. And uh, they were exhausted through the vote, through the, uh, the final efforts of the mediator. We've had uh, mediation support all along uh, until uh, we've satisfied uh, ourselves that every, every avenue had been taken place uh, that it's only at that point that we would intervene. Why did you not bring in the the media, the Reg Pearson, the, the top mediator? Why did you not bring him in a month ago when negotiations were stalled all through the Christmas break? We've had a mediator there throughout the entire period mm -hmm. and uh, that led up to uh, the vote that took place uh, a little over a week ago and uh, when those results became clear that and obviously indicated that there was a uh, uh, an impasse that was going to be very difficult to break, that's when we sent in Reg Pearson. Now, as I said earlier, 50,000 student, 50, students, uh, they, they've each lost a lot of time and money because throughout the course of the strike, uh, I mean, it, it's very difficult for someone like me to, to predict when it's going to end because both parties are saying, you know what, we're going to work and try our hardest. And, and I mean, politicians are saying we're working hard to get back in class. I mean, no one knew to get a job on day one of the strike to, pay, to make up for lost funds during the summer. Now, my question to you is what is the government planning to do in order to help with some of those costs that students are, are going to have to bear because I'm sure there's going to be a large number of students who are probably going to have to drop out, transfer, have, have a lot of other costs coming up. Well sure, I mean uh, the first thing we have to do is get this uh, bill passed in the legislature and I'm, I'm, you know, we're all hoping above hope that the NDP are going to come to their senses and allow us to get through. Uh, at that moment we'll have a clear picture from the university as to how they want to see the rest of the term uh, roll out. We've already begun to work with the university. Uh, I had officials in over the weekend on how we can extend OSAP assistance to those students who uh, uh, are having to spend extra time at the university. Now, does this back to work legislation, do you think, um, kind of set a precedent for other university strikes in the future and allowing university administration to just say, you know what, we're going to wait it out, wait for the government to, to come and save us? Listen, I think the one signal that we've sent, and you began your interview with uh, 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 questions about the amount of time that it took. I think the one signal that we sent is that we believe in the collective bargaining process uh, and in this case in the university sector and we will uh, will do everything we can to facilitate that collective bargaining process and what's happened here is uh, is not met, is unprecedented and extraordinary and is only done in the most uh, uh, severe circumstances. Right. So when we look at other institutions that are undergoing contract negotiations, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the collective bargaining system continues. Right, but do you think uh, a big criticism uh, of the union and uh, the or of the the union to the university, and, and I'm sure the other way around is well, they're just they're not bargaining. They're not they're just sitting and waiting it out. Um, but do you think that this is going to make it easier now, now that it has been done for the first time for a university? To, for the administration to just sit there and yeah, they might be at the bargaining table, but they're not going to put anything on the table. Do you think it's easier for them now to to just to wait it out because they know well, that may be coming? I'm I'm going to reject part of the the premise of your question. I'm not going to sit here and pass judgment on uh, the position that's put forward by the union or the position that's been put forward by the administration. Both of them, I think, would say that they've uh, acted in good faith. The simple fact of the matter is that we received uh, uh, the views of Reg Pearson on Saturday that there was a deadlock. Uh, we're not here to take sides. We're not here to point fingers at either side. The simple fact is there's a deadlock. And the simple fact is that we have 50,000 plus students. And under collective bargaining, when we've reached that deadlock, when there are no other avenues to, to go forward, the government has a, a responsibility to move. 
We hope that never happens. It does once in a while happen. We hope that through the collective bargaining system it can be resolved. But I'm not going to uh, uh, take you at your word by saying the union says this, what do you think? The administration says that, what do you think? At the end of the day, uh, we're not here to take sides. We're just here to get 55,000 students back uh, in the classroom. What about uh, 2010? Uh, with I mean, there's a large number of universities whose uh, contracts with TAs and whatnot are all expiring at the same time. Um, I, I mean, does that pose, are, are you at all concerned about that? Does that pose a problem? Uh, We're, listen, we have faith in the collective bargaining system. Uh, there are dozens of contracts every year which are signed. Uh, the public's probably very unaware of because they're, they're done through different unions at the university. They negotiate, they reach a contract. From time to time there are strikes uh, uh, and, and disruptions. We've seen one at Wilfrid Laurie, we've seen one at Windsor to, to pick two examples, and they were resolved through bargaining. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the students through the Ministry of Labour. We're there to support and facilitate discussions, but strikes sometimes happen in the collective bargaining system, and uh, I think we have to accept that if we want that to be the premise of uh, our society and a basic right and exists. It's only in these extraordinary circumstances that the government would ever intervene. Uh, I want to ask you about, uh, I mean, th how th the solid foundations that, that this bill uh, is on it and, and what you think about that and what the chances are uh, of CUPE actually taking this to court and say this is not legal back to work legislation because it's not a clear deadlock or what have you. Well, at the end of the day, the, 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 the government uh, works very closely and, you know, yesterday the uh, Minister of Labor made reference to the Attorney General. We uh, work very closely to get the best legal advice that the, the legislation we're putting forward uh, uh, fits all the legal criteria. As to the technical or legal nature of it, the bill, as you will notice, from the Ministry of Labor. So I I'm, I'm certainly would defer to him on those questions. I'm not a, a, a legal expert or a technical expert, but obviously uh, we feel that this bill is uh, uh, and we've received the best advice that this bill meets that legal criteria. And just to clarify, if they were to challenge it in court, we'd still go back to class pending what happens there? So Again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. We put forward a bill right. which, uh, by its very nature, if the government to put forward a bill, we uh, have to have re received advice that it is legal, that it will right. stand up in court. So we put that forward in good faith. Uh, we hope the NDP come to their senses, quite frankly, and we can get it through and you can get back to class. In terms of hypothetical legal action, again, it's it's first of all hypothetical, and second of all, you'd uh, I'd have to I'd have to refer you to those technical experts who could who could walk you through some of the legal aspects. Okay, I just have one more question. Um, Eighty days on strike, uh, summer, a part of a summer loss. Is York a second-rate university? I don't think York's a second-rate university, but you know what? I I, I think both sides. Uh, you know, part of our message to both sides leading up to this is that you have to you have to think about how this is affecting the reputation of York. And it was, I think, one of the one of the the words of encouragement that we were using. I don't know, encouragement's not strong enough, but one of the one of the ideas that we were certainly saying to them: Let look, it's it's not only incumbent upon you for these fifty-five thousand students that you get back to the table and reach an agreement, but it's also uh, incumbent upon you because of, of students who are considering coming to York for undergraduate, for graduate, that you want to make sure that York's uh, reputation continues. So it's unfortunate they didn't reach an agreement. As I said, we're not going to take sides, but we're, we're taking right. the action what right now to, to get the, the students forward. What do you think? I, think, I, think, I think what we have to do is we have to get students back in the classroom. We have, uh, uh, I shouldn't say we, the, the York administration and York Union have some work to do, I think, in, uh, in, in smoothing out the, the playing field and, and, and moving forward. But York is an outstanding uh, university here in the province. They have a lot to offer, and uh, you know I remain very optimistic that uh, uh, we're going to see things get back to normal over over the coming months and as we move into the next academic year. Okay, thanks for taking okay. the time. Thank you.